watching Tag TV. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 14th of June. Soldier, two militants killed in gunfight in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan supporting terrorism matter of concern for world, says experts. And Afghans welcome ceasefire between government and Taliban. And now for all the details. An Indian Army personnel and two militants were killed in encounter in the forest area of Bandipura district of India's Jammu and Kashmir province on Thursday. The encounter began on the sixth day of an anti-militant operation when militants fired upon the search party. A soldier and two militants were killed in an encounter in Bandipura district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province on Thursday. A massive search and combing operation was reportedly launched last week when militants and security forces exchanged gunfire in Rainar forest area. The encounter began on the sixth day of the operation when militants fired upon the search party. The soldier, who sustained bullet injuries during the encounter, was rushed to a military hospital where he succumbed to his injuries. The encounter comes after four security personnel were killed on Wednesday after Pakistan violated ceasefire in Samba district of the strife torn province. India accuses Pakistan of training and arming militants and helping them infiltrate across the border to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley. Pakistan denies the allegations. Air quality in Indian capital New Delhi was dragged to unhealthy levels again on Thursday, mainly due to dust storms from western India. Quality of air has worsened in New Delhi in recent years, making it the sixth most polluted city in the world, a report suggests. Air quality in India's capital, New Delhi, plummeted to unhealthy levels on Thursday, putting residents at risk, mainly due to the dust storms from Western India. A U.S. embassy measure showed levels of poisonous airborne particles known as PM2.5 had reached 194 on Thursday morning, leading to quality of air to drop down to unhealthy category. Early morning joggers in the capital complained of burning sensation in the eyes and breathing difficulties. और व्हीकल की वजह से ही जो है ना आंखें जलने लगती हैं देखिए दिल्ली के पॉल्यूशन की वजह से आंखों आंखों में जलन है और जैसे हम लोग दौड़ते हैं सुबह वॉक करते हैं दौड़ते हैं उससे भी जो है ना सांस चढ़ जाता है दौड़ते हैं ड्यूरिंग एक्सरसाइज एंड ड्यूरिंग वार्म अप एंड व्हेन यू आर रनिंग तो वी कांट रन टू मच बिकॉज़ व्हेन वी आर डूइंग प्रैक्टिस 3 टू 4 किलोमीटर बट इन द पॉल्यूशन वी ओनली डू वी आर डूइंग 1 किलोमीटर 500 मीटर बिकॉज़ we have the breathing difficulty. Air quality has worsened in New Delhi in recent years, prompting Prime Minister Narendra Modi's office to directly monitor measure to clean up the capital's air. A report by the World Health Organization last month said India was home to the world's 14 most polluted cities, where Delhi ranked 6th most polluted. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's ousted Premier Nawaz Sharif on Thursday hired a new lawyer to represent him in the corruption references filed against him after Khwaja Harris recused himself from the case on June 11. Defence lawyer Khwaja Harris withdrew himself from representing his client Sharif in all three corruption references against the Sharif family after the Supreme Court's earlier directives to wrap up the trial within a month. On Thursday, Sharif's new counsel Jahangir Jadun appeared before the Accountability Court during the hearing of the Evanfield reference to submit the power of attorney on behalf of his client. Sharif and his family members are facing the corruption references accused of money laundering, tax evasion and hiding offshore assets. The next hearing is scheduled to be held on June 19. Moving on. 
The growing roots of terrorism in South Asia concerns the world. Be it the Taliban or the Islamic State, these terror outfits are getting stronger with the backing of states and security forces. Recently, a Europe-based think tank expressed concern over Pakistan supporting terrorist organizations on its soil, which is also a threat to regional security. Zuneet Qureshi, director of the European Foundation for South Asian Studies or EFSAS, recently expressed concern over the growing level of radicalization in Pakistan and in other parts of South Asia. While addressing a seminar in Germany, Qureshi said countries like Pakistan have been using dreaded terrorists as its proxies against India and Afghanistan. He said the nexus between state and non-state actors is a challenge to deal with. Local grievances and social political dynamics have been exploited by terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda, ISIL, Hezbollah Mujahideen, lashkar e toiba the Afghan and Pakistani Taliban, and many others, generating a global master narrative of conflict. Many of these groups are known to receive active support from state actors to pursue strategic objectives. Experts have shown concern as Pakistan has only acted against terror groups that developed an anti-Pakistan agenda and are considered a threat to the regime. Islamabad's treatment of good and bad terrorists concerns regional security and safety. In news from Afghanistan, the announcement of ceasefire between the government and militant group Taliban has become the source of pleasure for citizens in Afghanistan. They are now freely visiting the markets ahead of the festival of Eid and are buying Eid necessities. People in Afghanistan have welcomed the announcement of ceasefire between government and militant group Taliban on the eve of Eid and hope it gets extended from both sides. The residents of Gabul city and scores of citizens from across the country are now coming to the capital to buy its necessities as there is no fear of attacks. The fruit dealers in Gabul also expressed their happiness as the announcement of ceasefire has improved their sales. <laughs> The Taliban has issued a statement saying it had ordered its fighters not to clash with Afghan security forces for the first three days of Eid. The group far, however, does not include the foreign forces. As Afghanistan started its maiden five-day test match in India's southern Bengaluru city on Thursday, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi took to Twitter to congratulate the team. He expressed hope the historic cricket match between India and Afghanistan would strengthen ties between the South Asian neighbours. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday said on Twitter that he hoped a historic cricket match between India and Afghanistan would strengthen ties between the South Asian neighbours. Afghanistan started its maiden five-day test match in the southern Indian city of Bengaluru on Thursday with a match attended by top government officials from both sides. Of course, it is a historical event in our sports history and also in our relations between both countries as far as sport is concerned. Uh, the Afghan players, uh, the Afghan cricket team, national cricket team, they have come a long way in a short period of time. Uh, and this is their uh, uh, first test match uh, with the first team in the test match world, worldwide. India has already offered war-ravaged Afghanistan two stadiums in the country to host matches with other nations. New Delhi enjoys close relations with Afghanistan and both accuse common neighbour Pakistan of not doing enough to tackle militants operating on its soil. India and Afghanistan are like two inseparable brothers. We are completely committed to strengthening and rebuilding Afghanistan, including their sports. Uh, we have of course seen them in IPL. We have the and congratulations to Afghanistan for becoming a, a full test uh, nation now. And we would like to see them more in uh, other, other sports as well, uh, wrestling leagues, kabaddi leagues and uh, uh, many other Olympic sports. 
awarded full member status by the International Cricket Council or ICC alongside Ireland in June last year, Afghanistan became the 12th test playing nation after first being recognized by the ICC in 2001. India is the world's top ranked test side. Inspired by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's radio show on organic farming, farmers in India's Jammu and Kashmir province have adopted the natural way of growing seasonal vegetables. The farmers are now growing vegetables without the use of chemical fertilizers and are happy after getting maximum output of their produce. Farmers in Udhampur district of India's Jammu and Kashmir province are nowadays happy to have adopted organic farming and producing seasonal vegetables without the use of chemical fertilizers. Inspired by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's slogan that doubled the income of farmers by 2022 and the use of organic farming instead of chemical fertilizers, the farmers in Chental village of Udhampur are setting example. Earlier, the farmer used to grow seasonal vegetables in a very small land, but now grow it in 8 to 10 canal of land without the use of chemical fertilizers. We have a lot of benefit from our vegetables. We have a double rate of our vegetables. We have a lot of benefit from our vegetables. We have a lot of benefit प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी की मन की बात अन्य कोई भी उनके इंटरव्यूज जो टीवी पे आते हैं किसानों के लिए मैं उनके लिए उनका धन्यवाद करता हूं और लोगों को यह कहता हूं कि ज्यादा तो ज्यादा इस यूरिया से दूर रहें और अपना खाद जो कि देसी खाद है इसका ज्यादा इस्तेमाल करें the farmers said they are also helped by the agriculture department which educates them about the harmful effects of chemical fertilizers and the benefits of organic farming. After adopting the natural methods of producing vegetables, they are very much happy as they have got maximum output of their produce. Muslims across India are nowadays visiting different markets for shopping during the festivities of the holy month of Ramadan ahead of the festival of Eid al-Fitr. Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar which involves rigorous fasting for about 30 days after which Muslims celebrate Eid by offering prayers and preparing a lavish spread of traditional delicacies. Markets in parts of northern India burst with activity as Muslims flock to different shops for shopping during the festivities of the Muslim holy month of Ramadan ahead of the festival of Eid al-Fitr. Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar which involves rigorous fasting for about 30 days. People in Varanasi city on Tuesday throne markets to shop for food items, new clothes and jewelry. Shopkeepers were also happy as they did priest business. ईद का तो माशाल्लाह बहुत उत्साह है चारों तरफ आप देख ही रहे हैं जोशी जोशे लोगों के अंदर खरीदारी भी चल रही है और हर दुकान पर इस वक्त माशाल्लाह भीड़ी है क्योंकि हर आदमी ईद की तैयारी में लगा हुआ है Meanwhile, similar scenes were also seen in Srinagar city of Jammu in Kashmir province where shops were crowded as customers bought various items from Varanasi to sweets to comments to celebrate Eid. अभी बहुत गहमा गहमी है मार्केट में ईद की तैयार हो रही खासकर जो बच्चों के मलबूसात हैं, जूते हैं, कपड़े हैं, लोग उनमें अल्लाह काफी बिजी हैं, वो सामान ले रहे हैं, बेकरी हैं, कॉन्फ़िशन के लिए स्वीट्स हैं, बिछाया हैं और बहुत ही जो ज़रूरत है ज़िंदगी हैं, लोग इस वक्त अल्लाह से मशगूल हैं, सामान ले रहे हैं, बातों के साथ-साथ लोग शॉपिंग भी कर रहे हैं। After the month of fasting, Muslims celebrate Eid by offering prayers in the morning and preparing a lavish spread of traditional delicacies and spend the day with family and friends. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Soldier 2 militants killed in gunfight in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan supporting terrorism matter of concern for world, says expert. Afghans welcome ceasefire between government and Taliban. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com/SAsianewsline. 
and follow us on Twitter at S Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Watching Tag TV.